Hey guys, Mr. Turbo458. Another project update. The Kennedy Engineering Adapter Plate, which is here, is installed. The flywheel is installed. The clutch disc is in there. And the pressure plate are all put together. Everything's properly torqued. Um, if you're thinking about doing a Subaru conversion, I would definitely recommend going with the Kennedy Engineering Products adapter plate. It comes with a flywheel and all the hardware you need to install. Um, the pressure plate and the disc are separate, but those are cheap enough. Um, the pressure plate I'm running here is a stage 4. Now, it's going to be really strong, but I'm planning to run a decent amount of horsepower. So, according to Kennedy Engineering's website, the proper clutch disc would be an organic disc. Um, that's what I'm running. It's just an unsprung Exidy clutch disc. Um, and then they say that this particular setup can hold up to 298 foot-pounds of torque, so that's plenty. Um, if you'd like to see a video about Subaru Swap, like what it involves, and that type of thing I'd be happy to do one of those just let me know in the comments um, here's the turbo well the hot side anyway and the twin scroll as you see there you have two exhaust pipes coming in and two on the turbo side so the theory behind it is that you get faster spool time because your exhaust pulses aren't running into each other and there's a lot of benefits to it, but um, the only downside to it on this particular engine is that giant exhaust manifold right there limits my ground clearance quite a bit, um, but we'll have to address that. I thought about raising the transmission up. If you come over here. So I also cut out the package tray here. Um, along there, I actually had a roll cage tube going across there, which is now gone. Reason being is the turbo is going to sit about here, and it will get in the way of that tube and the package tray itself. So, the other issue I'm running into is the hydraulic clutch slave cylinder could potentially be in the way of the turbo. Uh, it's going to be close. Might have to build a heat shield to protect that. I was going to lift this transmission up two inches in the back, but looking at it, I just don't think it's worth it. Um, I could mount off of these two ears here, which are where the bus, um, the bus actually has a mount for those two tabs there. So I was going to run a tube up higher and then drop some mounts down to these ears. But I just don't feel I could be strong enough because I'd have to literally drop the mount straight down because my turbo clearance is probably, you know, barely right here, maybe in a little further. So I just don't feel I can get a good gusset going diagonally without interfering with the turbo again. So I think I'm just going to run it where it's at. And then I've got this tube under here, which is welded to the frame horns. And I'm thinking about mounting a skid plate to that and then just running it under the engine and that should protect it good enough. Um, it's an on-road car. It's not an off-road car. so. But that's where I'm at with it right now. Um, that's one of the things you got to do if you don't have to cut the package tray out necessarily if you're doing a Subaru swap. I've done it without it. But that was a non-turbo 2.2 liter so this one being turbo I either relocate the turbo or make room in the car over in here for the turbo so that's something to consider if you if you're looking at doing one of these swaps um, turbo or non turbo I was thinking about a rear mounted turbo but I'm gonna run the full um, amount of sheet metal and everything in the back and I just don't see good room for a turbo. Um, 
Plus, I don't want to buy another turbo. This turbo came with the engine. So, which hopefully I'll be putting back together tomorrow. So, I should have a video up on that if I decide to do one on that. But there you have it. Um, see, I think that's about it. Have a good day.